I have so many reasons to be here and I have so many reasons to live and I have so many different avenues and, and different things that we take for granted these, day, these days. There's, there's just so many other things that can give us happiness and joy and that high, you know, that, well, one, I was killing myself, two, everything was being destroyed around me. You go to rehab because you have a problem and you need to fix it. And it's a, it's a matter of life to have the amount of pressures that I have on my shoulders. And I have two options. I can either crumble or I can become a diamond. And to become a diamond takes time. To crumble quickly happens. Legit question. They keep trying to make you look crazy to make themselves look good. Is that it? In my opinion, yes. But it's more so the response so that they can they can get their team of people to be clipping me so that they can break it back to court. Be like, look, oh my God, Aaron's, he's losing his mind. Oh, oh, just like Angel did the last time she brought me to court. Yeah. Sat across the, the thing was like, I love you. I love you so much. And I'm like, mm, yeah. Um, this is Ann Carter. I want to verify that this is actually my GoFundMe page. Um, there's been a lot of misdirection that I've had to do in order to protect myself um, from being a, sil a silence breaker for um, my brother who is a racist. And um, now they're after my life. My whole family is after my life. And uh, they're setting me up. And Sony Records owes me $3.5 million. And they don't want to pay me. And it would be in their better interest, just like Michael told me. Um, and Brad Paisley, who sued Sony Records for $10 million. Um, they owe me money and they're trying to and uh, I'm begging you and I'm pleading you, help me raise $100,000 as soon as I can so I can move to an undisclosed location where I am safe. My realtor won't sell my house. They're all involved in this and they're trying to keep me there. They had somebody, they had cops come and check for a rope in my garage saying I wanted to hang myself. So please trust what I'm saying and please donate. Everybody got their hands out and asking me questions, but I don't tell them nothing, man. I'm just keeping it stepping. I tell them money didn't make me. I'm making this money. I got a fetish for this life and ain't no taking it from me. You see, I own nobody, nothing. These problems, they always chasing me. Respect is all I give and take and you cannot replace me. One of a kind in my pedigree will never fail. That's why I'm shaking all this drama and keep on getting mail. I'm staying clear from these fakes and flying on the leers. I know these women and snakes gotta disappear. That's why I'm living my life like it's my last day, cradle to the grave and I'm balling focus on getting paid. I've been really hurt over the years because I've seen the substance abuse with you. I find myself repeating the same things. And I don't want that for myself. I don't want a short life. I can say I've been through hell and back and I'm back. And I'm here to stay. What's going on? No. She told her friends that, oh, they were like, oh, I see you're dating Aaron Carter. He, she, oh, why is that? And you know what she says? Oh, you know what she says? He has money. He's nice. It's about being honest. I didn't always be. Okay? Yeah. I just admitted that, yeah, I did call you a squatter last week. But you've also done things that you don't mean, right? You don't say in our relationship to me, right? Yes. Okay. So there we go. Moving on, right? Yeah. All right. You, Michael. Yeah. Please be respectful in the chat. Like I said, who I was yesterday, I buried with a shovel. So, and who I am today is a completely different person. So, stop trying to bring me down to your level, because I'm not. I'm not going down there anymore. I will delete it if you delete the post right now. Sign the NDA right now and it'll happen simultaneously. Okay, I'm deleting this post. I still got time. I'm deleting Video proof of Melanie Martin's still recording many 22 seconds of planning on extorting me and blackmailing me. You just did that to me. He needs to delete No, that I didn't. I, I have nothing to okay, do with you. That worked at a big bikini bar. Yeah, I give her, I give her two rooms in my fucking house. All right? Two rooms in my fucking house. All right, I pay for everything for this f***ing girl. She gets mad over a, a elliptical machine downstairs that I ordered for her and it didn't come in time.
Alright guys, I'm gonna go play some records real quick, babe. Watch my boy. If you need me, better holler. Hell, not leaving my home. She fell asleep with the baby in the stream. Oh, I'm gonna go to the store. I just want to say thank you to everybody who has been cool, calm, collected, understanding. People go through shit. Um, I'm sure if you guys are married and or engaged that you go through shit too. Difference is, is my life is aired out in the public. Nothing I can really do about that. And nothing I really want to do about it because I like it. <laughs> You gotta get the fuck out. They're gonna get a restraining on, order on you. You know her. They're planning this for fucking a while, and they want to get you put away. And they're gonna act quick now. I told you this was gonna fucking happen. I told you everything I said that was gonna happen is happening to you. And listen to me this time. You've got to get the fuck out of there. Get everything important out of your house. And fuck, you can't fight her from the room from a jail cell and that's where you're headed they're gonna have you put away for what i haven't done anything they, they, they've been compiling fucking evidence and they manipulate the evidence I so that's why that's why um angel's been or angel's been and her have been talking now you heard about that from mom me and me and mom have a bad feeling. We think that this is going to happen. She's going to have, she's, uh, she's got evidence on you that you probably don't even know is evidence that she can have manipulated. They're going to I got, I got it. I, I have a video of her putting a knife around her neck, okay? If that's not going to matter, you're not going to be able to show the video of your... How can they, how can they, how can they possibly put me away? Aaron, because all of them can gang up on you. I'm well, I'm getting the I'm getting the out of here after today. I'm I'm going on vacation, so. Come here. I know you want to go to Colorado, but come here because I can help you. We gotta get this baby from her. You were right about everything. I've been right about every single thing. By the way, by the way, say hi to everybody on Instagram because they can hear you. So, this is my big sister, guys. She will never stop protecting me. She loves me. Um, and they all say that they love you right now. They're saying, oh my God. We, we. You can't not show your entire hand to, to everybody because guess what, Aaron? She's been, she's been planning this for a while. And and just like Nick and Angel were doing. is coming down on you. And they're going to act quick now because of this. And, and, and but what, 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 what are they going to do, though, to me? I haven't done nothing but provide for her. I've done nothing. And I have Spencer here as a witness. Matter if, if all of them are saying the same thing against you and gang up on you. I'm sure, she's got that whole house wired, Aaron. Okay. I know I'm having it sweeped today, actually, by my my, pe my private you investigator. Need to there and you need to come here with me, and I can help you. And you need to get your son, but you can't get your son if you're in a padded room or in a jail cell, and that's where you're. They at. they can't do it. A mental evaluator came here last time, and he said, "Dude, you're good." Yeah, but that, that, but the second time that they called, Melanie and I were in a fight for three days. I called for a death report, someone a death threat for me, and then they told me that, oh, do you want to kill yourself? All this shit, just like they did two years ago when they, uh, the, the same mental evaluator came and said, oh, there's a, a rope in the garage and you want to hang yourself. Aaron, she's been planning this for a long time. She was just waiting to have that baby to tell you, here's my meal ticket. Mom's calling. Hold on. But, I got both of you on the line. Mom, um... Mom, mom, just so you know, mom. Mom, mom, mom. Hang on, hang on. Aaron, Aaron's on the fucking internet. I have Aaron, don't do that. We just, we want to be able to talk to you privately. All right, well, I'm going to hang up on them. They're, they all are like, um... All right, send our love. They're all, they're all being nice. All the fans are being really yeah, supportive. Yeah, they're wonderful, just like Britney Spears. Okay, you hear, hear what Mama Jane said about you?
We are following breaking news here on Live Now from Fox. Singer Aaron Carter has been found dead inside his Los Angeles area home. This is according to TMZ. Now, the singer has died after an apparent drowning uh, this morning. And a neighbor called paramedics to the home around 11 o'clock this morning to report a drowning. Now, according to LA County Fire, his body was recovered from the pool and he was pronounced dead on scene. Former child pop star Aaron Carter was found dead inside his home today. It's the tragic death of a young performer inside his home here in Lancaster. Aaron Carter's fiance is here. Friends, neighbors, and fans have gathered outside the home. Other news today, Aaron Carter was once on top of the music charts, then substance abuse and mental health issues consumed his life. And this weekend, the 34-year-old Carter was found dead in his bathtub. Jim Murray with the latest. Begin with breaking news tonight. Former child pop star Aaron Carter has died. He was found dead inside his home in Lancaster this morning. Yeah, the troubled singer-songwriter, he had been in and out of rehab for years. Deputies arrived. Emergency personnel pronounced Aaron Carter dead at the scene. Well, they, what, what do you know? What did they tell you? No, oh, they, I, I've been, I've been here the whole time. I, I have to, that's why I need to talk to them and see what's going on. Melanie Martin, off and on girlfriend of Aaron Carter. The 34-year-old singer turned rapper and former teenage heartthrob was found dead in his Lancaster home off Vista Drive. Aaron met Melanie Martin in January of 2020. How or where they met has never been disclosed, but Aaron mentions her working in a titty bar prior to them getting together. In March of 2020, the two split up after an altercation, and Melanie was arrested for domestic violence. She almost immediately signed up for the cam girl site, Cam Soda. At some point, they reconciled, and in April of 2020, the couple announced a pregnancy. March 2020, there was a domestic violence incident, and the police came, and she was arrested? Yeah, she was arrested. <sighs> for the first time. <laughs> for the first time. There were some personal issues that were going on in the relationship that kind of were already there was no foundation, you know, like, yeah. I, I mean. It was a big a misunderstanding. Yeah, and the cops didn't really give much of a say. I came out with my shirt off, like, yeah, and she was really trying to just, like, pull me closer, and obviously she's got crazy-ass nails, and I was like, knock it off, you know what I mean? And they saw that, and then they didn't really give us much of a choice. From my point of view, like I said, it was just a big misunderstanding. It, we, I did not think it would go to that point at all. I didn't think we would, it would, I would be so aggressive and, you know, and me would too. Be that way. And me too. Yeah. Like, it takes two to tango, man. She, we had a disagreement about, you know, something that was a boundary that was crossed. She <laughs> went and did a pregnancy test and came back. 12 hours later to show me the pregnancy test. And I was like, I don't know if I believe this or whatever it is. Like, nah, I don't want to do that. So, and she was extremely hormonal. Like, everybody like deserves a second chance, in my opinion. And it was, there was a lot of emotions going on. There was a lot of lessons learned. A relationship is based on a solid foundation. And yeah. we it, have it now, so. So we didn't have a solid matters. foundation, so it all crumbled. But she miscarried shortly after, and they split up once again. They reunited and became engaged in June of 2020, announcing it publicly on social media. And then I kind of saw some like destructive, self-destructive behavior from her. And I was just like, well, I can't let this happen to the woman I do love. So I just don't want people taking advantage of her. And that's what a real man does for his woman and for his fiance and wife. We're not dating. Uh, uh, this is my, this is, this is the first real engagement that I've ever, I'm going to be 33 years old. This is not a joke. This is the real deal. When's the uh, wedding date? We don't have a wedding date. <laughs> we don't have that yet. I would like it to be, you know, after the whole COVID, after the world back to normal fully. Yeah. And kind everyone's of, healing. And never, yeah, exactly. Everyone's back to normal, economy's better. <laughs> I think I think it's important to work on our relationship, our trust, our boundaries, things like we like I said, 
Right. We got the foundation wasn't right before the house crumbled. As we know, the world was turned upside down during this time, but it still seems like they moved rather quickly. In March of 2021, they announced they were once again expecting. On November 22nd, 2021, Prince Lyric Carter was delivered by emergency C-section after 13 hours of labor, but mother and child were in overall good health. Yeah, and the bed was uncomfortable and C-section was uncomfortable and oh it was just local, yeah. And I feel like our lifestyle, we, we're homebodies, so it, it's pretty easy to adjust to having a baby in the house. Besides yeah. her postpartum um, yeah. breakdown the other day that she oh. had, and it was 11.30 at night, and she's like, I want to go shopping. About a week or so after the birth of their son, Aaron catches Melanie communicating with family members he refused to speak with. Perhaps she didn't understand the complexity of his family situation, but she absolutely should have respected his wishes and boundaries. The two split up. He had suspicions that his twin sister Angel, older brother Nick, and sister-in-law Lauren Kitt had been making attempts to create a scenario in which he could be put under a conservatorship, and they would therefore be in control of Aaron and his finances. Right now, our family has been through so much in the last year, and my brother just had a kid, and my, my twin sister just had a kid. They got restraining orders against me. I, I didn't appreciate uh, uh, my whole family trying to, like, allegedly, you know, prosecute me in a malicious way, and using the court system to harass me. And, you know, I found out in the transcripts they were trying to get me Baker acted and get a conservatorship over me. Oh. Uh, and they didn't win. So they could manage your money. So they could sedate me for the rest of my life, allegedly. Hmm. And it's in the transcripts. That's what they were going to do. I always thought that she was some sort of pawn or something like that anyway. I always thought, I was like, man, you say some weird shit, like checking my messages, trying to tell me messages about like my, my brother trying to send me messages and like, I don't know, like, I don't like these vibes and you're, you're like talking to other men behind my back and Nick planted her. I 100% agree. I, 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 would, I would not put it past somebody to do something like that in my family. Oh, I trust my gut. Why am I upset she talked with Angel? Because she did it behind my back and lied to me for a year and a half about it. That's why, but you're blocked now. Adios. Stop taking away this time. I haven't been able. She hasn't. I haven't been able to see I him for been four able days. To know you never want to see your son. <laughs> Except Angel literally said she hasn't contacted her. Laughing my ass off. Did you or did you or did you not speak with Angel? I did. Yes. There you go. So I never told you to reach out to Angel, who tried to imprison me, violate, get me to violate eleven restraining orders. Okay. Um, and label me a pedophile and put me in prison. All right. Angel is lying. Of course, Angel is lying because they'll get hit with malicious prosecution. So, but my 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 uh, my people will take care of that. Why did she contact your family? That's not right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I was under the impression that you missed that. Don't. Melanie spent Valentine's Day, February fourteenth, two thousand twenty-two, with some other guy from Ninety Day Fiance named Georgie. No, I'm just telling you guys because. This would obviously eat, eat me up alive if I never... Recall. Really? You guys are going to attack me when she's on live right now admitting that she's cheated on me? And she cheated on me on Valentine's night. And 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 that also that I told her that I don't... I think, yeah. I, I don't appreciate it for me. To all these people. Like, but I can't force her to do anything. Trust me. <laughs> all right. Well, he's outside, so... Because I'm not going to reveal who the man is, okay? Okay. Because Melanie does not want me to do that. No, he's not abusing me mentally. We're just fighting, and I actually no, no, don't, don't doubt. I you, realized you it admitted that you were abusing me mentally. I, I'm sorry that I got so upset and I accused you of something. That's postpartum, and, and but and, and and me being, a, I don't know. And you guys are just making this worse by saying that, and that's why they're doing it. So I'm just. I didn't force her. I, you know, I'm gonna no, start I'm the one who did it. He, I, I did something behind his back. So, another person. It's called domestic abuse. Aaron, you need help. Melanie's got Melanie. He's gaslighting you. You know what? I'm going. No, I said you're not. Hey, why did you end it? Why did you, you guys? Well, he wants. I mean, everyone yells at him. So I'm just finally. 
I did something wrong, so I'm telling you guys. As early as three months after the birth of their child, Melanie was talking to other men and acting out of spite towards Aaron. She took every breakup as an opportunity to see other guys. Meanwhile, Aaron was trying to grind and hustle and give his young family a sweet life. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Aaron Carter, and uh, this is my crib. Come check it out. And this is uh, the refrigerator. To be honest, I don't really know what's in here. This is the best part of the house. Come on, I'll show you. This right here is my living room. Kind of made it my own and had the shag carpet, you know, put on here. This is the love shack, you know. Now, if you would follow me right over here, I will take you to the number one marina. This is my brother and I's boat. You know, we do a lot of fishing on this boat. You know, we've had it for about three years now. We've had a lot of fun on it. This is our other yacht. This is the family yacht. All right, everybody. This is my studio. Now, this is where we make all the music. This is where I recorded tons of my albums in here. It's just never turned out the way I thought it would. On the road, Jane and Aaron began to argue. But it was never about a mother-son relationship. It was always about work, and I was just like, sometimes I would just stop and I would be like, Mom, why can't we just fight about, you know, me being a teenager or me growing up? It was all about money. All the bank accounts of Aaron's were emptied out. There was no money in Aaron's no. bank account. Jane and her lawyer point out Aaron and Bob signed a document stating that she did not mishandle Aaron's money. Throughout her son's rise, Jane says money was being spent, but by others. My husband was buying boats, tractors, tour buses. How about your kids? The kids had spending habits too. Hey. Clothing, jewelry, you name it. You know what people are saying at home, Jane. Two huge superstars, millions of records sold, and she's saying the family is broke? Overextended is more like it. Aaron already harbored a lot of trust issues. When he turned 18, he got access to his trust, but no taxes had been paid on any of his earnings throughout his childhood, and he was left with an enormous tax bill when he was already finding it difficult to transition from teen idol into adulthood. They, when I turned 18 years old, I got hit with $7.8 million of taxes that they didn't pay when I was 11 and 12 years old. Wow. And all the penalties. So and they... then I had to fight that. And when I turned 18, I got trust money. I got my trust money, but they wanted to take all my money away from me right away. Because of taxes? Yeah, and because I was the only one that had money. <laughs> Not only that, Aaron also spoke about emotional and physical abuse. You mentioned on No Jumper that it, you and uh, Nick had like a fight where you, you choked him out until yeah. he passed out, uh -huh. he which, which never made it show. onto the, the cameras. Well, no, he said after I did it, he goes, that's the first time you ever came at me. And then I'm proud of you, he said. He's like, look at my head, look at this. Yeah. You say this every night, and yeah, but let me tell you something real quick. You're gonna turn the music down and respect me. Hey, all right? Don't spit in my face, all right? Uh, don't all right? spit in my face, all right? You're gonna respect don't me. Don't spit in my you're face. Respect me. Don't spit in my you're face, Nick. You're don't respect spit me. in my face. You're I'm sick of you doing this. So you're stop gonna respect it. Me. Stop you're it. You're gonna respect stop me. Stop it. What are you doing? You're gonna respect me. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? You're gonna respect my house in my room. What are you doing? No, it's gonna respect me. Let's go, baby. Let's go. You guys, you guys, no, no. You came at me, you see me I didn't come at you. Excuse me. I walk away from you. Every time you fight with me, I run away from you. I was 19. I'm 30. I'm almost 33 now, bro. So, were you guys really getting into physical altercations like that? A oh, lot during that era? Or, oh, or throughout always? our whole lives. Okay, because at one point you were saying... But like were... a big brother type of thing, you know? I mean, sometimes he would he would be a little overzealous, but it, I'm here. And other alleged incidents that occurred within his family. Like you talked about how your sister uh, did something to you or... Yeah, I mean, you know what? I mean, uh, unfortunately, you know, 
For me, I had to really release these skeletons from my closet. They all learned unhealthy coping mechanisms. People want to call it addiction and a disease, when in reality, it's the person trying to escape unresolved trauma and personal demons. It's so easy to look down on someone's struggles, make a mockery of them, and ignore what brought them there. The more money the Carter family earned, the more damage and dysfunction it seemed to cause. And things went even further south when their parents divorced in 2004. And, and I love my life. That's why it's like, you know, there's different stories from the family. Oh, they did this, parents did this. We had great parents, man. What got in the way was money. Cosmetics, superficialities, and fame. The drinking started getting worse when my husband started cheating on me. That's how I dealt with it. After the divorce, I was totally vilified. They accused me of not caring about my kids. My family was destroyed. That's why I turned to drinking. I was doing a liter a day. I felt like everybody already thinks I'm a piece of dirt. I can just go crazy. Who cares if I live or die? On the night of January 13, 2004, she arrived unannounced at the home she once shared with her husband and kids. Why did you do what you did that night? Because he made me feel that he wanted us to get back together, and I was going to surprise him. Oh, well, she surprised me, OK? She really surprised me. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Guess who's back? Mommy's home. And then she's like, where's your father? And I was just like, I went over to the other house and uh, caught him in bed with the girl in my bed. The girl was Ginger Elrod. She and Bob were to be married in less than two months, once Jane and Bob were divorced. I said, honey, I said it's time to go. And she's like, Bob, do something. So I get there, you know, glass is broken, you know, there's blood dripping down the door. And, you know, I hear screaming. And Bob's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what, Jane, this isn't good. And I was trying to restrain her, and she was a wild woman. She was, she was just ripping up and throwing stuff all over the place. I pinned my mom down in bed. She kicked me in my face and threw me off of her. I ended up throwing a remote control at her, and then I got arrested. I wanted it to stop. It was your son who called 911 on you. Mm-hmm. Bob told him to. How did that make you feel? I couldn't believe it was happening. The charges would be dismissed. Jane's feelings could not be. The mother began drinking more heavily, Nick was gone, and the younger siblings were left to their own devices. We watched all of the resulting chaos unfold before our eyes on the reality show House of Carters in 2006. I'm not an invalid. I could go right now, and I could be fine the rest of my life without any of you guys. Oh, your independence could have killed you. Because if she didn't look at you or I didn't look out for you, you want to take your yourself to the hospital, and you know that. You never take care of well, me. you. You being a little You gonna run, Aaron? Run. Go to Mexico. Because you're independent, right? It was clear none of them were really prepared for adulthood. It's way hard. I'm gonna get one of them cushion for the cushion, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Look at my jumping spot. Dude, don't jump, please. Why? Because I really don't even want you to do it. It's dangerous, Aaron. Don't, I don't worry. Dude, don't, don't jump, be paranoid. please. Paranoid. No need to be paranoid. All right, here I go. Aaron, don't be an Aaron, idiot. Be... Aaron, just go no, do it. Aaron, don't be an Freaking idiot. And the overall responsibilities were left to the older siblings. Get. God, I'm pitching. The, the colds are too high. They're too. Huh? I need. No, it's funny. It's seeing Nick trying to grill. <laughs> yeah, Nick can't cook. Yes, no. he can. No, he can't. No, he can't. I didn't think he could change no. a tire. He's a stupid dog. Okay. okay, don't Ouch. touch any of this. Hold on, Aaron. Don't eat yet. Aaron, come on, man. Why do you my food? Yeah, but that's like disrespectful. Everybody's waiting. You should wait too. Give me the damn mushroom. Angel, come on. I'm hungry. Fine, you can have one too. Everybody had a little bit. You want a mushroom too, Leslie? Not right now. Oh, this is gonna be a horrible dinner. Oh, these are gross. There was a lot of anger and resentment between the brothers. 
Nick having worked long and hard to reach the level of fame and fortune that came with being the lead Backstreet Boy. No, it's supposed That's the, the other thing people, I learned. That's one thing I learned. Aaron, other people have yeah. schedules too. But it's about us. But other people it's have schedules. But Aaron, you're not listening to me. Other people okay. have schedules too. What's your schedules? Other, um, Kenneth okay, has well, a right schedule. now you're delaying me. Kenneth has you're a delaying schedule. Me. Can you please you leave delayed so I can, me. You're delaying me now. So let me get ready and go away. All right. You know what? Thank you. Sorry. He's okay. Sorry. You he are always it. every single day. You got this look in your face like you hate everybody. I don't hate he everybody. Do. What you are you talking have this, about? You, for maybe it's just with me. Where Aaron was able to just show up and open for them, and suddenly he had this entire solo career, and he was only nine years old. Yeah. Do they come. A lot of people come up to you. What um. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Lots of people. Yeah. How about how about all the. The fan attention. I mean, I'm sure Nick is used to like the craziness by now. Are you? Yeah. Did you get used to it even before you started um, going out there? Well, I used to go on tour with him, and I used to get asked for autographs. And Backstreet boy Nick Carter jetted to Ottawa, Canada to catch little brother Aaron's final concert date last Sunday. Hey little buddy, this is Nick. At least Stein, I couldn't speak. I just wanted to tell you that I love you and I'm sorry I couldn't be here. What the 11 year old up and coming singer didn't know is that his busy superstar brother was actually waiting in the wings. His mum and dad told him that the surprise guest would be Celine Dion and our ET cameras caught all the action exclusively. I haven't seen him in a long time. Uh, it's been it's been about six or seven months that I've seen him. Hello, Ottawa. I decided to make a guest appearance for my little brother. Now I'm gonna take a little seat on the side of the stage and I'm gonna watch my little brother tear up the rest of this show. And y'all better be really loud. Aaron had also never had anywhere near the same kind of pressure and responsibility Nick had to, being the eldest son. My little brother, the only brother I got, is not going to die under my watch because mom and dad and everybody else out there, they know that what's going on right now, that I'm taking care of you. They know that, all right? And I swear to God, man, you need to understand this right now. Under my watch or not even under my watch, I am going to protect every single one of you, all right? Because that is who we are. We are a family. We are the five. The core, the five, the fimp. Fimp. <laughs> he sold over 75 million albums as a young solo artist and received plenty of awards and accolades along the way. Internationally, uh, I sold 10 million records before I turned 10 years old. Wow. So, And I didn't even know what was going on. This was before streaming. This is when people had to go purchase the CD. Yeah, no, it was before the internet existed. Yeah. All that stuff. In March of 2001, at 14 years old, he had his Broadway debut in Zeusical, a Dr. Zeus musical. It's basically about, um, I get in trouble for thinking too much and imagining a lot of things, and every time I think of something, it appears and gets me in trouble. Jojo might not be so much of a stretch either. Oh yeah, he's exactly like me. That's the funny thing. I mean, I have a big imagination, like, big, big, big. He finished in fifth place on season nine of Dancing with the Stars, with partner Karina Smirnoff. He returned to stage theater for the Fantastics, which ran at the Snapple Theater Center, and had mastered a more formal singing voice, rather than the pop style he was used to. He had also refined his dance skills, and was clearly dedicated to becoming a better vocal artist and performer. It's a use your imagination kind of, kind of thing going on here. The one thing that's really cool about the Fantastics is that the audience is literally a foot away. The whole point of this show is to do it live. My role in the show is Matt, the boy. There is a boy and there's a girl and it's a love story. They live right next door to each other. And even though he tried to leave and do his own thing, he loves her and it's a happy ending. On January 31st, 2012, his sister Leslie passed away from a prescription overdose at the age of 25. And this devastated the Carter family. Aaron says he wants his mom to get healthy and kick her alcohol addiction. 
a caring, loving woman yeah, who you. has been numbing for so long, you don't even know what it feels like to not be numb. Oh. That's why you're here today, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You don't care if you live or die right now. Be honest. I really don't want to die. Yeah. Look at me. I really don't. I need you. I know, and I want to be there for everybody. Like I, I want to be there for my grandchildren. But for her to be there for you, she, she has to be there for herself first. Yeah. Selfishness. She, oh, I know. I learned. So, it. I understand. So, I, I learned. And you did give up everything, yeah. and you went through traumatic went experiences. Yeah. This was part of your history that you've tried to deal with at the same time yeah. that you were trying to help your children thrive and succeed and set a good example for them. So most of your life, you've been having to deal with all of the trauma that's happened to you at the same time that you were trying to focus on someone else. And we're asking I always, you now. That always, that always helped me to focus on somebody else. Yes, but that's, but that's an avoidance thing. Your daughter died. Yeah. You know what it's like to see your baby in a coffin? It's horrible. She How was, did she die? We, we don't know. It's very mysterious. I don't feel like I got the right answers. I feel like it was covered up. Did your drinking get worse after your daughter's death? Oh, most definitely. That's when it just exploded. Yeah. Aaron seemed to be keeping it all together fairly well and tried to keep his focus on his passion for music, touring and performing live until he began working on his first adult solo record. Well, I, you know, I started off a very young, you know, young performer. So I started off as a kid, which a lot of performers these days who are kids, they start off kind of as preteens and teenagers, not, not really as little, little kids, you know. Between 2015 and 2017, he released several EPs online and founded his own record label, Rockus Records. But on May 16th, 2017, the patriarch, Robert Jean Carter, passed away. And this brought Aaron to his knees having never had a real close relationship with his father, who was preoccupied with Nick's career until he reached adulthood, and then moved on and started a new family fairly quickly after the divorce. I felt like I'd been responsible for the death of my sister, mm. for the death of my dad, mm. for my family falling apart. I think that's one of the things that hurts Aaron the most. He just was so busy, you know, he with his own life that he wasn't there and I think he wanted to be there for them. In his heart, he feels like he could have done something more. Let me tell you something, Eric. It's not your fault. None of it. You seem like you might need a hug. Sure. <laughs> well, that same year, 2017, your dad, I guess, takes your tour bus and goes to Florida? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I'm the one who suggested that he did that. Okay. To get away from his ex-wife. Or, yeah, ex-wife. And he ends up dying. He died. And do you know how he died? We don't know. We don't know if there was some, some suspicious uh, stuff that happened with the ex-wife because he died on the day that he got the, the, the divorce papers from Ginger. Leslie died. She was, she was found by the EM, EMTs with whole Xanax pills lodged in her throat, undissolved, and then I was told later that she got into a fight with Ginger, and Ginger knocked her out in the shower and then gave her a concussion. They laid her down to sleep, and then she died. Ginger is your dad's... Ex-wife. Ex-wife. Yeah, so you're, and you're, I'm coming to get her. So you're saying Ginger has something to do with... Killing both of them. Killing your sister and your father. Absolutely. Okay. And I'm not going to stop. Nevertheless, Aaron's fifth studio album, Love, was released in February of 2018 in collaboration with Sony Music Entertainment. After you get out of rehab, the next year, that's when you dropped the Love album? They did it in such a very weird way. They decided to release my album when I was in rehab, man. In rehab? But what's the point, since you can't promote it, obviously, in Correct. rehab? Correct. Yeah, the point is, is look how bad Aaron's doing. Go pay attention to me. Let's, let's clickbait Aaron some more. Ah. Accusations began surfacing against Aaron's older brother, Nick, starting with Melissa Schumann claiming that when she was 18 and he was 22, he had forced himself on her and that she was saving herself for the right time, person, and place. That she was very uncomfortable with how rushed and forced the encounter was, but felt the pressure of his fame and influence to oblige. Aaron sided with Schumann and the other anonymous claimants. I know of Melissa, uh, but I, w what I will say in regards to this is 
is when, when I got on, on Instagram Live with Melissa Schumann, that's when all the restraining orders came after me, right after. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay? Right, because she, so she put tried two together to, uh, here. She, I guess she tried to file uh, a charge against him, but it was past the statute of limitations. Correct, eight years. Yeah. Yeah. I had no clue who Melissa Schumann was before this. Had never heard of her, let alone spoke to her. By 2019, at the age of 32, Aaron had begun to spiral out of control with his need to escape. And not only his will, but his ability to care for himself was rapidly declining. I'm sorry the way that I look. Opening up exclusively to ET about his battle with body image issues. I have a hiatal hernia. I have a stress condition, it's an eating disorder. How would you feel every, every, every two seconds seeing a tweet, you have AIDS, go die. Oh, look at this meth head. Oh, meth kills, crack kills. What, you have trolls attack you in real life? I, I've been having BSB fans literally like, like coming up to my house and into my garage. They're still with, that with, committed to their fandom. No, no, no. They're they're committed to stopping, um, to to getting me looking like I'm crazy. Uh, I'm the only one that put my mom in rehab. All uh -huh. right, I'm the only one. You don't see Nick there. You don't see an angel there. You know, I could be violating my restraining order right now by even talking to you. I don't, but I don't care because I know what they're doing. Uh -huh. Nick is a serial beast, okay? He abused me my whole life. The reason why I have a high hernia and a stomach condition today is because he used to make me drink, force me to drink alcohol from the age of like 11 to 15. Wow. It would pay me money and make me drink like um, like a big ass cup of like vodka, tequila, um, uh, uh, like wild turkey. So this all is once together. you're famous, he's forcing you to basically when take When I was like 12, 13, like so, he so started. You're, but you're already in the public eye at this point, and was this just, of course, by that, couldn't characterize it, could you characterize it as like drinking, like just fun drinking no, times that's that was made with somebody to, that, too young? No, that's abuse to a little brother. Well, yeah, if they I mean, take it to a certain he, extent, he, that, That's sure. against the law. I mean, right. uh, I got alcohol poisoning about 10 times from him. Uh -huh. Especially after he was served with restraining orders from both older brother Nick and twin sister Angel. Several restraining orders actually, both citing threats of violence to themselves and members of their households. Uh, uh, to my sister Angel, Nick, and Lord Kit, and Corey, enough is enough, guys. Yeah, it's enough. You can stop trying to take my kid and stop trying to do things that are gonna make me respond in a psychological type of way that's gonna get me in trouble. You're not gonna do it. Happy New Year. Thanks. Enough is enough. Because you're getting to blame and you're trying to, yes, they're trying to take my kid from me. Yep, Angel and Nick, that's, that's their, allegedly that's the, that's the word on the street, right? What was thrown? A dead bird. They, somebody shot a bird and threw it on the porch. And it's got the puncture wound from a, sh from a shot in it and it bled out and they threw it on the porch and they threw it up against the window and there's there's a little bit of the blood right there but that doesn't happen from a bird flying into a window. Aaron denies uttering any such threats and an extension to the temporary orders were not granted by the judge. He was never arrested and there was zero proof he had threatened anybody but he noticed a clear obstruction of his career opportunities as a result of the reports, and he was in no way financially or mentally stable enough to file a defamation claim against his family, who had joined forces against him. Little family style rest and relaxation. A little time off together though after this at, at yeah. home in, in LA. We're going shark fishing. Yeah. In the Pacific. Nick will help me take Nick to Catalina. Martha Stewart, Rosie O'Donnell, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Kathy Lee Gifford. And believe it or not, they really did have hit records. You see, but unfortunately, none of them made it as a finalist for this Billboard Music Awards this year. In the summer of 2019, he participated in the Celebrity Family Edition of Marriage Boot Camp, alongside his mother, Jane Carter. I haven't really spent any time with you until these last 10 days here, and in 15 years, and it's just been a memory I'm gonna cherish for the rest of my life. And it's been a wonderful experience to be here with you, my son, who I absolutely adore. 
mm. and always have. I'm filled with a lot of emotions, a lot of sadness. I definitely have put up a lot of guards, you know, and, and tried to stop crying and stuff like that. And I've been angry and, and uh, confused, and but at the same time, I've been getting answers and I've been getting what I needed from my mother. So that's what's giving me peace, and and that's what's you know bringing tears to my eyes. They appeared in hopes of healing past wounds and face their shared struggles with alcohol and substance abuse and resolve some of the family trauma as a result of the divorce and Leslie's untimely death. I want to be a family with Aaron. I don't know if you can find it in your heart to forgive. It's been so bad for so long and we've had so many tragedies in our family. I just wish you would find it in your heart to forgive me, but if you can't, I will understand. When you're weak, I'm weak. You gave up your dreams and your aspirations to help me achieve mine. You always tried to protect me, and I didn't want to listen. I am sorry for that. All right. Congratulations. You ready, beautiful? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Sacrificed my whole entire life for that child and for the other child for the sake of that family. But I was willing to do it for them, for the family. This opened a whole new can of worms, and a lot more of Aaron's childhood trauma began to surface. What's the price of fame for you? It's been the loss of my family. What do you think the price of fame was for your family? Self-destructing, like a tornado just came through our house and family got tossed everywhere. Right, right. So, so Nick files a restraining order against me, right. saying that I want to kill Lauren Kitt and the unborn child, right? What? About four months, three months ago, four months ago, you know what he says to me? What? You know, um, I'm really proud of you. And I'm like, listen, man, I'm pissed at you, is what I said. I said, you're not there for our mom you gave up. I said, you know, if she gets sober in two years, are you gonna at least try to have a relationship with her? Cause uh -huh. he hasn't spoken to her in eight years. Really? Yeah. So I said, you're going to at least try to have a relationship with her. And he goes, eh, I don't think I can do that. Really? Yeah. And then he didn't even show up to our sister's funeral, uh -huh. Leslie. But so when, when... Because he was performing two hours away, that was more important because Leslie banged on his door, got a Greyhound bus from Canada to Tennessee where he lived, knocked on his door and he slammed and said, I need rehab. I need help with rehab. And she died a week later. Whoa. And then he didn't show up to her funeral. That's wild and that his sister Leslie had been inappropriate with him during a time when she was being given all these various medications and misusing them or not taking them with consequences to her mental state. He claims this occurred between the ages of 10 and 13. And I will note that Leslie was only a year and a bit older than him. Well, in 2012, your sister Leslie died of, a, dr right. of a drug overdose. She did. 25 years old. 27. 27? She joined the 27 oh, club. Were you guys really close, you and Leslie? Leslie and I were very close. Leslie and I, she was my best friend, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, we went through a lot of stuff. Leslie, you know, had some, uh, some, some things that she was going through. But if you watch House of Carters, none of us were listening to her. And all she was doing was asking for us to listen to her and her emotions and her feelings. And my brother would turn away and walk away from her, you know, and I had dealt with my previous stuff with Leslie in the past, you know, that she obviously healed from, you know, and for and said she was sorry to me one day for, you know, going through abuse like that at, at a young age. But and she was the one that was abusing you? She, yeah, because she suffered from bipolar and, and she had some, you know, it runs in the family. I think Aaron wanted to be open about his struggles and how skewed their family unit was. And he did something to blame. And I believe prescription medication played a big role in it, especially since they ultimately led to her death. However, there was definitely something darker going on in the family. She sacrificed her life for these two boys' careers. She gave them every opportunity. But at the these same, but, ungrateful boys. But at the same time, we gave her a job for 12 years. Now Jane Carter is telling her side with some shocking new charges. The drugs the drinking, the partying. But you thought it wouldn't happen to your kids? I tried to prevent it from happening, but I couldn't. Nick and probably BJ are the keepers of the real truth. Something happened to one or both of them. Never said what. Learned, 
who Aaron is and who I am and who each individual person is. I feel like do, a lot of time nobody really gives do, a damn about half the stuff I do. I feel like I was responsible for the divorce. As far as I can remember, the first fight I ever saw them get in, I always was in the middle and I was always trying to stop it. There was a point where it was all cool, and even when Nick was in the business, but as soon as I got in it, it got really, really messed up. It was up. never cool though, Aaron. You were never, you never responsible. I know, but at the end of the marriage with them, they weren't fighting over me. They were fighting for my money. Mm. I was used from the get-go. They put like me into commodity. music right as soon as I was like six years old. I just wanted to be home and going to school. And I'm the only one in the family who, I didn't even see a day of high school. I didn't see proms. I didn't see any of that stuff. Maybe I'm a stronger person today because of it. Maybe. The oldest siblings tend to take the brunt of the storm in toxic families with generational curses. Something went wrong between our family. It was always my fault, even if it was somebody else's fault. So I always took that. I always took that in. For so many years, I was the provider of my family at the age of like 15, 16 and on. I feel like you like your friends more than you like your own family members. Yeah. You don't think that I, I don't want to be closer to you? I don't know, but that's always the way it's seen. Leslie, yeah. I saw so many people that had families and, and great families and brothers and sisters that, and they were just, everything was cool and everything was calm and they knew how to communicate with each other. And I so badly didn't have that. And I, I believe that we did have that at one point before everything started in the, in the business, then it shattered. It, it just all came tumbling down. And that's what I'm trying to do is pick up the slack. Unfortunately, the abuse seemed to make its way down the line. And Aaron alleged that there was a period of time when Nick had been inappropriate with one of his younger sisters. And my guess is when Nick moved away, realized it was wrong, or just lost interest, it was she who in turn started being inappropriate with Aaron. I try to have friends, but if I tell them anything, you know, they get kind of, you know, jealous and, you know, I want to ride this, I want to do that, I want to play Nintendo in your house, can I go in your house, you know, can I meet your brother, stuff like that. So I try to, you know, just be normal. When kids are left unattended and are also exposed to inappropriate situations, material, or anything that skews their perception of what is an appropriate sexual encounter and what isn't, and at such a young age, you can't really blame any one of them for inappropriately experimenting with each other. But whether they realize what they're doing is wrong and stop, or carry on devious behavior into their adult life, is on them. He's getting heavier and heavier and heavier into the Xanax. And Leslie, my sister, you know, she was heavy into it as well. But uh, an opportunity happened where I could save my life. Leslie never was presented that opportunity. I had a ch second chance to live, and you know, she died from an overdose in my father's bed. Leslie was just 25 when she died two years ago. Aaron had already been to rehab. How much Xanax were you doing? Um, at the height, I was taking uh, seven two milligram Xanax bars, so that means 14 milligrams a day. That is three times the average dose, an amount that would knock most people out. At what point did you, you know that you had a problem and had to stop? I never really did. Someone step in? I mean, my mother stepped in. So her and my brother teamed up and they got me to the Betty Ford Center. All of the Carters, including Nick, had struggled with substance and alcohol abuse, publicly admitting to using cocaine and alcohol to excess in a series of interviews between 2013 and 2015. 35 years old, Nick's seen the ultimate highs and lows, a DUI, a bar brawl, battles with alcohol and cocaine. That was then, this is Nick now, sober, mature, and reflective. There's a lot of yes people out there. There's a lot of people. I mean, those are the perks, but they're 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 negative perks. You know, they just don't have the purest of intentions. But I said to myself, I don't want to be that person that you turn on the television and they're saying, oh, we feel really bad because, you know, he died. Unfortunately for Aaron, his troubles came when everyone had a cell phone and was online, plugged into celebrity news, and anyone was potentially a paparazzi of sorts. I've got it under control, you know, I'm doing everything that I need to do and, um, you know, just focusing on my music, which is my love, it's my passion, um, and really just, you know, mm -hmm. taking care of my aftercare. In the news, there's hundreds of posts from media and they all said, you know, that I'm in rehab, 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 right? That's not what's happening. 
I'm, I'm in an uh, outpatient program that is just meetings. So it's NA meetings, you know, AA meetings, just so the judge can see that I'm taking care of my active care almost coming up on five years clean. It was real easy for the public to believe Aaron was a crazy drug addict and was making threats towards his family. However, Aaron was never charged, had a defamation lawsuit brought against him, or was served any demands to cease and desist. Nothing. If he was making all these outlandish claims and they were false, they could have brought legal action against him. When I speak, I don't get cease and desists or defamations of character or slander. You know why? Because I'm telling the truth and there's factual information that, circumstantial factual inf information that backs it up. So therefore, if you do send a lawsuit like that towards me, anybody out there, I will counter sue you and I will win because I have the factual information, it's freedom of speech and it's public knowledge. Also, if Aaron was that out of control, he would probably have had more charges than a couple of marijuana misdemeanors, which were later dropped. All right, so then 2008, you get arrested in, uh, in Kimball County, Texas. Uh, yes. With, uh, I guess you were speeding and there was two ounces of weed in the car. Uh, no, I was speeding, there was one gram of weed in the car. One gram of weed. Nick had a laundry list of arrests. DUIs and was causing all kinds of public disturbances. Hey Nick, did you choke the bouncer? Wow, well, you know I'm just a guy trying to enjoy some vacation time down here at Key West. Tonight, Nick Carter is out of jail. One day after the Backstreet Boys singer was kicked out of this bar, arrested after Key West police say he went on the attack, choking a bouncer. Nick, they said that you were aggressive and heavily intoxicated. Any truth to that? Did you choke a bouncer? Nicholas Carter. Earlier in the day, the 35-year-old faced a judge. You've been arrested for the offense of battery. The court finds probable cause for that offense. Yet his recovery and comeback was embraced with open arms. Reportedly, he and his brother-in-law didn't get their way Wednesday night inside the Hogs Breath Saloon. Carter and Papillons, who's also under arrest for headbutting an employee, told police that bouncers attacked them like Navy SEALs. Do you have any remorse about what happened? The, the truth will come out. So why was Aaron being publicly shamed and judged so harshly? Some of the most influential people of all time struggled with substance and alcohol abuse. So what made Aaron the villain? Excuse me. Can we get a uh, caption? Eric Selma. Can we get a caption? <laughs> He's into it. Aaron Carter. Aaron Carter. Aaron Carter. Carter. He's uh, Nick Carter's little brother. Nick Carter's and Aaron's actually Aaron has his own career, his own solo career. Aaron, point at me right here. <laughs> In the final days before his death, he was trying to sell his home and get as far away from California as possible. He had plans to drive down and stay with his mother in Tampa, Florida between early November until after his older sister BJ's birthday in mid-January, which is roughly the length of time it takes for a home to sell and then close. I think I'm going to see my mom and driving the RV um, uh, into Florida because, uh, you know, she's not doing very well right now. So, uh, like, uh, really doing that well. So, I gotta go see her. Um, but, uh, but I'm still going to be making my side, uh, you know, all, all the all the sessions and everything. And uh... after um, after December, uh, after the you know, December 11th, um, you know, I uh, I'll go I'll go spend time with my mama for Christmas and New Year's and stuff like that. And then, you know, uh, I want to be there for my, my my big sister's birthday. Late October 2022, he was working with small-time music artist Check the Star. And they were planning on shooting a music video together when he arrived in Florida. So Sunday, get everything lined up, get the music video lined up. So we gotta have, we gotta be in the cemetery at nighttime with shovels. Um, okay. Some, something simple. It's lit. Yeah. You don't even know how lit this is. This is lit. Yep. Yeah, and then we're gonna ride back. We're gonna as a family. So I guess he's gonna be, he's gonna be driving. What he, he, got, he got Chuck. Does that mean I'm gonna be in Florida for Halloween? Yeah, uh, five days from now, yeah. That okay. would be fun. No, 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 you would be leaving like around Halloween. Well, realistically, how long is it gonna take us to to um, to um get to get what we need done? Because the record's done. And I'm sure yeah. it, I'm, like, it sounds like it's mixed and mastered already. I don't know how I to know. that. <laughs> <laughs> he also planned to meet up with a couple other fellow musicians and friends 
and intended to keep doing everything he was doing, live streaming to earn income, to aid in his pursuit of independently producing his albums. You coming to Florida? I'm coming to Florida, guys. No, you're not. No, you're not. When you coming to Florida? No, what? You already you already drive? You driving right now? I'm in the RB. Bro, listen, I have I have a hookup and everything outside my house. Well, I'm 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 coming to Tampa, so you you know my mom in Tampa. She's like every day. She's like, here's a new house, here's a new house, cause like, cause I'm coming up on my third flip in real estate, and you know how you hear mom, and dad do real estate. So, yeah. By the way, we'll take you know he's he's, he's a billionaire, baby. So, um, um, but I keep I keep telling my mom, I'm like, I don't want to move to to Florida, mom, until I'm to um, I mean like with the like with the Haven or uh, Windermere or with the Haven or. So you don't want to move to like Tampa, you know? I'm gonna come see you, bro. Whenever you get here, when are you gonna be in Florida? Uh, I'll be there in five days. My my mom says four days, but it only takes actually about thirty eight hours across the state line in Tallahassee. So I'll be I'll be there. But I gave one of your artworks as a blessing from you for me to uh, no jumper on my last name. Yo, he he came at me with some sour punches, bro. When? Did you? Is, is it up already? Guys, I'm, I'm in the RV. I'm so excited you're coming to Florida, bro. I'm coming. I'm, so, I'm really excited about that, bro. I'm coming. I'm coming straight to you. To Gwen, when I'm out there, I got, I got to see my mom, my sister, I got to see my niece. Are you going to be 45 minutes away, bro? I know. I know. Hey, can I can I do like a duet with you and put that on my love point, my love two point oh album? Yeah, of course. How does the hook go again? I never said it when I thought you wouldn't be I never thought oh, I was oh. something was needed. I broke the man myself in pieces. I never thought you would be the one that I needed. Bro, I got I got some I got some good ones, some newer ones. Oh, that, oh let's go. Bro, but all I've been doing is is recording. Well, I'll be there, so uh, I'll see you soon, okay? okay? Not only striving to reclaim his music career, he was also doing all the right things in order to regain custody of his son, submitting to randomized drug screening, attending virtual recovery meetings, and counseling sessions. I'm closer to 40 than I am to 20. Enough is enough to my family. Like, if you're that worried, you'd show up. You'd show up to my house. That's an hour and a half away. Knock the door and see what I'm, what I'm doing. You know, that's what you do. I think that my family... Yeah. Once, once I hit him with the terminology infantilizing, that the, 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 the times of infantilizing me are done, that it's over. There were times with all three of my sisters, even my other sister Leslie was alive, when I turned 18 and I got millions of dollars, they all were with me, hanging, hanging out with me, because I had the money. Then, then when I when I go broke and I lose it all, where are where are they? They're not hanging out with me anymore. They're not chilling, and now and then they act like I was like like I was there for them. But one thing that, that that's one thing that upsets me a lot. It's like, you know, you, you know, you give credit where credit is due, and, and I'm alive. I'm well. I'm happy. I'm healthy. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I I have a beautiful son who's very healthy too. It doesn't matter how how good I do with It doesn't matter the good that I do. They only see the negative. I don't, I'm not going to for it. You know, I'm a father. Um, I'm successful. I am a success story, and I'm willing to continue with that, whether anyone chooses to see it or not. If someone truly thinks like I'm down and out or something like that, you don't kick them when they're down, right? So that's not what it is. There's like I, I've, I'm coming up on five years of being clean. The media doesn't pay attention to it that as as much as they should. Of course, if it's you know like Demi Lovato, you know she o overdoses, you know, on, you know like, accidentally overdoses on opiates. And, you know, that, then the next day she's on the cover of, of, of Women's Fitness. They, they, the media doesn't treat me like that. They want to villainize me. And I'm done letting it happen. He had been supplementing his income by renting out his RV that he used for his summer of 22 tour on Airbnb and was doing live streams more frequently, seeming to prefer TikTok after trying out a few different platforms. Your RV is renting Airbnb, you broke. No, that's what you do. That's how you make ancillary income off of an item that you purchased. 
But see, so so you're on Airbnb too, looking up what, looking up what, the specs to my my RV. He and Melanie had also posted some racy photos on OnlyFans together, which seemed to generate a lot of income as well. But it looks like he lost interest in that when his live streams picked up more traction, and the account is no longer active, likely also due to their relationship troubles. And it seemed to be more so Melanie's idea as her way to contribute and not so much Aaron's personal venture. He had flipped a few houses and had gone from a small thousand square foot apartment to the nearly million dollar home he had up for sale within four years. My life is beautiful. Four years ago, I lived in an apartment that was a thousand square feet. I lived in a 5,000 square foot home. I owned six vehicles. I clear $70,000 a month. He was constantly learning and evolving adapting to the digital world as a musician and a young adult without much help or guidance from either parent or his siblings. Yo, why do you always have to put me down? Shut the f up. Yeah. Uh. Halloween of this year, October 31st, 2022, viewers suspected he was huffing at the very end of his live stream. He denied this claim, but doesn't offer any other explanation for this. Regardless, on November 1st, 2022, he set off on his journey to Florida in his RV. What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Good morning, I am on a road trip to Florida. I'll see you soon. I love you guys. Stay safe, stay healthy, happy, and... Uh, he had just broken up with Melanie once again after a disagreement they had regarding an appointment with Planned Parenthood that she'd made and attended without discussing it with him first. Uh, we've been on a hiatus, a break. I uh, guess it lasted a little longer than two weeks, right? And yes, your ex now. Yes, she is my ex. Melanie and I, and I are, are, are over. Are over after this. After this, just because you get mad that I that I, I don't believe in abortion. Um, I don't believe in like He didn't confirm whether or not she'd had any procedure or if she was pregnant or if she was just trying to ruffle his feathers. Any of that kind of stuff. Not saying that she did, I don't but you know, when you look on someone's location and they're at parent planned parenthood, you know, you know, that's that's that has to do with me too. So Maybe she didn't tell him because it wasn't his. Who knows? But the two were split up. Apparently she caught up with him before he could leave town, and while following the RV, she called the police and said that she believed he was driving under the influence. A whole gaggle of police arrived, completed their entire barrage of field sobriety testing, as well as searched the vehicle for any signs of drug or alcohol use, any substances or paraphernalia, and he was cleared and free to go. There's many differentiations of forms of drugs and substances and many different shapes of drug and substance abuse. There are players involved, there are people who want to see you fail, there are people who you don't want to see you succeed, but who are um, look how far I've come. Um, what am I currently on? I'm on an educational tangent. Um, so I just want to start this off by saying that before you wrongfully accuse somebody of doing something they're not, alright, bullshit you're on, you're jealous, you're mad that I turned my life around, and that's not, that's not my problem, that's yours, alright. At some point through all of this, he received an offer on the house 
and he mentions the RV still using the spare tire. So my guess is the police had suggested he have it replaced before taking that length of a trip, and he headed home. Tire that I had to change when I started my tour. Um, it's at like 55, and it's supposed to be like 75 or something like that. So I, I stopped and checked that out. My dog, my brother, thought you was on the way. I ran into a couple issues today. Yeah, I know. Due to some, uh, I'm still standing. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I don't do nothing wrong. That's why I don't get in trouble. <laughs> Facts. Like, you get, you, if I had done something wrong, I wouldn't have gone to jail. You feel me? It's good to know that you're doing good, man. Are you chilling at the house? Yeah, uh, I got a buyer, so I, I um, got a couple more fix, fix it stuff I got to do around the house. And then I'm headed to Florida. And we're waiting I'm on you. We wait. I'm coming. I'm coming, baby. I'm coming. Trust me. He live streamed that day and explained the situation to the viewers. Yeah, so yesterday, long story short, so I was prepping to leave uh, to go see my mother. And um, allegedly, Melanie called the cops on me and uh, trying to get me in trouble. And it's kind of odd for seven police officers to show up for a call, but all the police were cool. Uh, so the cops come and I said, yeah, what do I gotta do? Um, you know, always comply with you guys, always let you in my home. Uh, I knew every single one of the police officers there, the sheriffs. Uh, and then he finally said, well, clearly you're not on anything and what medications do you take? He had a series of questions that he needed to go through with me. Um, like things like what time it was, do I know where I am? <laughs> Um, he faced a lot of hate and hassle as he often did and clearly struggled to keep his cool while people were trolling him. I have stayed out of trouble. I don't get in trouble. I don't have a record. Um, I'm not a felon. I was arrested twice for smoking weed. Um, misdemeanors, they were dropped. Um, they're like, uh, you know, we got suspicion of, uh, we got a call in from your ex saying that you're drinking and driving and that you're, but Melanie wasn't even here. It seemed like quite the uphill battle, trying to earn an income while producing an album independently and having so many people focusing more on the negatives than the positives. I feel like a lot of my uh, personal life has been shared heavily uh, with, with a bunch of fake ass media people who think they're media, YouTube but yeah, no, I had a great, great upbringing I had, you know uh, but still, you know um, drug abuse and, and addiction can still occur and uh, it, it did with me many times throughout my 20s never been charged with any crimes, I'm not a felon. Uh, so yeah, I've just been, you know, taking some time to uh, just work on myself. Working with my therapists, working with my, my psychiatrist, working with uh, drug tests every week. I, you know, I'm in the outpatient program right now with Lion Rock Recovery, and uh, it's going great. You know, it's going really great. There was a streamer by the name of Ganville who had made it his personal mission to troll and harass Aaron during his live streams and encouraged his viewers to do his bidding. They would make use of bots to flood the chat with questions and comments that were known to trigger Aaron. This would also bloat his traffic numbers though and actually helped him climb the TikTok rankings, but we'll get to that later. Don't worry guys, I'm here. I'm here to remind everybody because you know why? I'm not dead and so the legacy will live on, but a legacy of truth and accountability, not this weirdo bullshit when somebody dies. No. Melanie soon jumped into the chat during his stream on November 2nd and began harassing him too. 
I'm sick, of, I'm sick of being with a woman who tries to manage me. Listen here, home girl. I owned a home before I met you. I'm gonna own a home after I meet you. I'm gonna have a successful career, all right? You were lucky to have me, and I was lucky to have you, but you didn't treat me good enough, all right? And you cheated on me like seven times under my own roof with our baby next to you, all right? Pathetic. Yep, I don't have time for drama. Yeah, you do. With your pink Rolex that I bought you because you're sitting here still watching. Told you guys she was watching. Micromanaging, acting like a manager, texting me what to say and what not to say. I never, I never cheated on that girl. Ever. Calling the cops on me, trying to get me arrested for a DUI. Did it work for you, sweetie? No. Hmm? Because I wasn't doing anything wrong. How dare you? All right, and I got screenshots of you breaking into my house at two o'clock in the morning, homie. Men, if you're watching this, be careful with women who are to try to set you up. Melanie, I paid your car insurance. Melanie, I paid your cars off. All right, I paid your your uh, everything for you. You never cooked for me. You, you never gave me a back massage once in my life. All right? You wouldn't even touch me. When we were having sex, you wouldn't even look me in my eyes. My heart is solid, clearly. I'm being real, dude. It's emotional abuse. I mean, that you don't think men can deal with it, too? You cost me so much in my career because of that lie. You can't go around and lie about abuse and then make false police reports to the pol to, to, to the police, man. He wants to be sure he never sees Prince again. <laughs> if you only knew. I am his father. I have a job I have for 27 years. All right, I can retire right now at 34 years old if I want. You're never seeing him again. I reported the huffing to the case. There was no huffing. There was no driving under the influence. That's why I wasn't arrested. When he blocked her, she began texting him. This is the exchange in which she states, you are going to die. I will do better. Melanie, do better. Be a mom. I've seen a huge change in, in you over the last year. You can tell you are doing, you can tell you are doing better for yourself and your child. Thank you, mer, mer, thank you, mermaid. Everybody who's had my back through all this, I appreciate it. Um, do better. Be careful. Don't. Another Christmas in the trenches. I'm so sick of spending holidays and Christmas alone. Like, I can't be sad. I can't have feelings I, I I'm sick of this I'm sick of these people I'm sick of these of these haters and jealous people in real life too and when all I did was protect that girl all I did oh now she says oh I don't care anymore blah 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 I, I'm not leave me alone Melanie god dude can't you take a hint She just told me you're going to die. Wow. It's fucked up. If he had been testing clean and had literally just passed a field sobriety test, he was obviously doing fine. He was very alert and didn't show any signs of intoxication during his live stream at all that day. So is this more of a veiled threat than a statement out of concern? He confirmed they were done for good and she was actively thwarting his plans to leave. Did Melanie tell you guys that she exchanged the $18,000 engagement ring that I got for her for a $3,000 one and pocketed the money? She didn't tell you that, did she? The one that I was wearing around my neck, as soon as I gave it to her, she went and got and collected money off of it. Why am I single? Because I deserve better. On November 3rd, 2022, he did his usual check-in with his viewers 
explained where he was at, how he was feeling, what his plans were, saying that he still intended to go see his mother, how important his son was to him. He'd also seemed to really get into the swing of streaming and had people put in place to help moderate the chat and keep it bot and troll free. You know, there, there's, there's so many different, so many different aspects in life that we can appreciate. Like for instance, I'm looking out, looking at these palm trees right now. Beautiful weather, you know, 90 degrees out, gorgeous. Um, I'm, I'm in a very good place. I'm in a very good place mentally. I'm in a very good place. Um, you know, I have my ups and downs. This year has been a fucking crazy year. I'm a father, whether you like it or not. That's just how it is, and he comes first. He comes before all you guys, so I'm sorry. No disrespect. Yeah, so anyway, you know, I just wanted to tap in with that, you know, let you guys know, know uh, my, you know, where I am today. Everything's great. I'm having a beautiful, blessed day. I have so many friends, like, right here, like, with you guys, and I can see you guys like friends and family. And, um, thank you, Mom, for giving me this life, even though it's been hard. You know, sometimes she cries about it, and it's, it, it gets her sad because she, she's... She says things like, you know, I'm sorry that, you know, we, you, you did this, you know, so young and, you know, you didn't have a chance, you know, to, to do this and this and this. And I said, Mom, don't, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You gave me a beautiful life. Mama's here. Mom, look, I made it, Mom. Look at all the gifts. Moms aren't perfect either. Yeah, you know, Mom, to me, my mom is the love of my life. I love that woman so much. Uh, she is my absolute everything uh, swaggy money Mary said you seem so so healthy and happy I'm glad you still have a wonderful relationship with your mom and everybody else giving me compliments I just want to let you know that those don't go unbeknownst to me I do see them and I do appreciate them and there's there's so much love I have for you guys you know he shared some of his unreleased tracks and entered some TikTok competition that puts them head to head and whoever gets the most donations wins Sure. I know a girl yeah. who's not plus me. Oh, he's already She's so fine, she can't be B. She's got everything that I desire. Set the summer sun on fire. I want candy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. They can head over to Aaron Carter. I'm a big Aaron Carter fan, so they're just watching Aaron Carter and listening to Aaron Carter music. I already told them they can leave. Their childhood crush is battling. I right, love you. No, I want to. Who is that? I see mommy sent me a right, so I'm following you right now. Jordan. I already think I'm keeping you guys here. Oh, no, no, no. Shoot up. A shoot public up. figure is private. I don't know what that means. Two times. We're playing it right now. Number 63. Oh, whoa. Uh, there's, there's Joy. Flood the chat with the Let's ego. Go, Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Freaking lying, bro. That's bro. Julie. Y'all didn't have to do that, man. You, say, you sang for her. Thank Drop. you, Shida. Drop. We gotta do. Oh, we gotta go. Appreciate that. Tap the screen. Where Hold on. I gotta tap Where's it. my sister, Montag? Let's go, team. I, I'm showing that I'm a. I'm, I, Let's I might go, be able team. To I might not be able to. It depends. So I don't know. Like, he beat me already. Obviously, he does. He's number one. I'm Let's new to go. this. But thank you, Let's everybody. Go. I'm a pack. FC I mom. I to my, cut, my sister. After beating out one of the highest ranking TikTokers in the world, he found himself among the top 30 worldwide and had reached 1 million likes by the end of that stream session. Yo, we're about to break a million likes. How fast can we do that? Ooh, I got a, I got a, I got a pancake from Jess. What's up, girl? Tamara, you are a beast. Gorgeous and a beast. All of you guys are gorgeous inside and out. Even the ones who are being mean, I still love y'all. It's all good. Sorry that you're weird. We're still at number 29. That's fucking amazing. 915? All right, come on, come on, y'all. We got this. We got this. We got this. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking help. Look at, look at, blah, 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 blah. let's go, let's do this. Let's do this dance. Almost a million likes. Crazy. You're a killer producer. Well, well, thank you. You're also getting followed for saying that. <laughs> I hope you mean it. 
I, I love you. I, I love you. Stop. There's no need to eat anybody right now, guys. Come on. He must have been high as a kite on life and would have no reason to numb himself. Perhaps to celebrate? Would it have been worth it to risk it all at that point? I love you. Have a blessed night. Oh my god, I fucking love you guys so much. What is the most strange is later that night, he became aware of what Kanye West revealed on Twitter that day. Kanye alleged that he was deliberately misdiagnosed and had been drugged and coerced into complying with those who managed him in the industry, having his kids and career leveraged against him. I'm uh, very scared for my life, actually, from these people. Um, I've been threatened with gangs. I have it all on camera. As soon as I leave here, I will be releasing it. Aaron's final public statement to the world was, Yo, Kanye, let's talk, man to man. On November 3rd, 2022, at 11.27 p.m., Kanye has been radio silent since, as of the time I'm recording this anyway, and there was no public word from Aaron before he was found by the house sitter, who I guess was a homeless woman he had just hired at the suggestion of a friend through a church he had recently begun attending, probably where he had some of his meetings. Clean five years. I, I, yeah, clean five years. I know. I, I don't really smoke weed anymore. And the cops were here the other night. Yeah, the cops were here. Yeah, I, I called. And what? The cops. Ha okay, called you the cops. called. Yeah, I called the cops. What happened? Uh, she wouldn't leave. She was. She was. You know, trying to trigger me and to. You know. Into reacting. Yeah, into reacting and arguing and and saying really foul things and and we were broken up. We we've been broken up and. I personally feel like I deserve a better girl because I'm a southern, I'm a southern kind of traditional raised ba southern Baptist yeah, Catholic yeah. kid, you know. Um, now it's just time to focus on being single, uh, focus on my aftercare, focus on my son. I have to unfortunately sue Melanie Martin for oh you're suing her for defamation of character. Okay. Uh, for lying about me breaking her ribs and I, and then her Kaiser report say that there was nothing wrong. So. What's up, everybody? Uh, I know there's a lot of weirdos and Twitter people saying that uh, I'm not going to be in Minneapolis tonight. Well, go ahead and take a bet on that. Um, I will be there, and it's a sold-out show, and you can't touch it. <laughs> the L.A. County Fire Department says the call came in as a drowning, and we now have new details. The L.A. County Sheriff's Department says a house sitter called 911 to report a man was unresponsive in his bathtub. The dispatcher guided the house sitter and advised her to start CPR before paramedics and deputies arrived. Emergency personnel pronounced Aaron Carter dead at the scene.
my wife and I ran across the street. Uh, my wife's an RN, so we ran across the street and knocked on the door uh, and didn't get an answer at first, but then uh, I think it was the housekeeper that wound up answering the door. Um, so we asked her if we could help, and she just kept screaming, he's dead, he's dead. Investigators confirmed the housekeeper found Carter unconscious. In the upstairs bathroom bathtub, unresponsive. Paramedics not able to revive him, pronouncing him dead at the house. We are at the location because this may be a, a high-profile case. You can see from Sky Fox Media vehicles surrounding the home. Neighbor Anthony Cheval heard the housekeeper scream. She just kept screaming, he's dead. As police sealed off the singer's home, his fiance, who's the mother of their one-year-old son, rushed to the scene in tears. She later posted this video sobbing in her car. 